that thing. So I did a video a little while ago about sea dew fishing and really didn't catch anything big. It was pretty disappointing if you saw it actually. So I came out here again, different time of year, gonna try and see if I can get something a little bit bigger this time. This is a totally different time of year than when I was last out. I actually filmed that one that I posted a few weeks ago in the fall or in the August, I guess, of last year or the year before. Now it's just after opening day bass season in Ontario. Normally this water is extremely clear. It's really dingy today. It's actually clearest it's been all year because this has been uh, pretty muddy in here. fluorocarbon to braid. Normally I like to use a little bit lighter line, but the water's so dingy I don't think it really matters today. And then I've got a um, just a mushroom head with one of these um, mega bass shads. There he is. Oh dang it. He wasn't really too interested. It was a little guy anyway. So that's twice now, so I don't think he's going to hit again. Just a log up here, saw one sitting on. Let's see what happens. Another little guy. So far my idea of coming out here to try and catch a bigger fish than that last video is not working out too well. I think this one might be a little bit bigger. Pro nah, I don't think so. Same size. Pound and a half maybe, two pounds. Pound and a half probably. And the unfortunate thing about these things is they cost 12 bucks a pack and you get one fish on them. There's a couple largemouth swimming around down here. It'd be kind of cool to catch a largemouth and a smallmouth. I don't really want to eat anything by the looks of it. So I think I'm going to go try another smallmouth spot just up the lake here. So I came up to this flat here. A little bit clearer water up here, which is nice. A little bit easier to see the fish. I just saw a big black one swimming around down here. There's one right there. Well, that's a big rock bass. It's a huge rock bass. There's a big smallmouth though in here too. Come on, rock bass, eat it. That'd be a nice one. This time of year, a lot of the rock bass are spawning. That's a huge one. And the smallies are in here, just kind of post spawn. I'd say one of the hardest parts about sea dew fishing is definitely boat control. I'm trying to cast behind me and I got really no way to spin it without starting the engine. I literally just threw it there. And this thing ate it. Looks like a big rock bass. Wow. It's a nice rock bass. It's a really nice rock bass. Not my biggest. Still a good one. I was just getting set up. I thought I'd throw it out there. Barely got the camera on. And he ate it. Bottom here's got a lot of old tree stumps and roots and the fish will spawn in it and they're just going to stick around. Eat on those other fish that are in here spawning like the sunfish and the rock bass. Got another hit there. Switched it up to a tube as well. That shad bait's good when they're really focused. There he is. On the bottom. So I just wanted to see if I get anything else with this tube. It's actually my old signature series tube from my tournament fishing days that set the hook produced. Love this color, especially on this lake. Any lake really, but this, this color is a killer on Lake Simcoe. It really stinks when all these clouds come in. On a day you're trying to sight fish. Probably some of Taro's old clients taking his spots. There's a nice one. Dang it, man, I keep losing these freaking fish. I felt big. 
straight too. Like I don't know what the deal is, man. That hook's sharp. It's a nice one right in front of me here. I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm not the best angle even for me to see it. He looked at it. He didn't eat it. I don't know if that was him or not. It just felt a little funny, so I always set the hook when it does. It's always good to kind of look around too because especially when it's sunny you might find like a boulder off to the side or something like that maybe see another fish swimming around you did not like it. a lot of the times if a fish is holding on a piece of structure you just kind of got to pull it from a different angle you know, so you try and go all around it, and sometimes they just really don't like it when it comes from a certain angle, and you can get them that way. Hope my hand didn't miss that jump. That was a nice one. Pretty good fish. Now the fun part, landing a four pounder on a sea That's extremely tippy. I'll figure it out. Whoa. That's not too, too bad. Watch this move from that into the splash well. A little live well, that'll work rod holder there. Sea Dew Fish Pro, I don't need you. Oh yeah, three and a half pound smallie, maybe a four pounder. Good fish. Oh. Check out that thing. Nice man. Nice fish like that on the Sea Dew. Cannot complain. Haven't caught a bass that big in quite a while. There you go. Nice, nice fish. So yeah, if you have a sea dew and you're doing some fishing, you got a nice little live well there just to keep that fish in for a couple minutes before you release them. One last look, that nice fish. There she goes. So that was pretty successful, pretty happy with that fish catch. Can't complain about a fish like that, man. That was awesome. Really cool, glad I got to do that. I'm gonna go look for another one now. So I found you generally have two types of moods with smallmouth when they're up like this. You got them where they want to feed on the bottom or feed up. So it's good to determine what kind of fish you're dealing with. Um, if he wants to feed up, a drop shot's a great way because it baits, um, you know, suspended above him. But if it's something like just looking down all the time, um, nose to the bottom, it's where a tube is really, really hard to beat or a swim head or spider grub, something like that. But these tubes are so hard to beat. What I'm doing as I'm drifting through here is just looking for either a light patch or a dark patch on the bottom. Just something different and that's really what these fish are, are keying in on. There's one right there. Right there. Little one. You might eat something. You never know. Did I scare him? I think I spooked him. Did he eat it? Oh no, he hasn't eaten it yet. He's looking at it. He's looking at it. spooked with the boat this close. You can see he's just holding on that little change in color on the bottom.
think he hit it that time. I don't know, he may not have. I just felt a little something. So I set the hook. But that kind of tells me he liked it looking that way. Definitely was more interested in it when I pulled it this way. Could even just been to now being on this side of him. The sun is blocking me and he's not as spooked. He's just a little guy anyway. The boat bumper there is marking a big, huge rock. It's a like perfect spot for a smallmouth to sit. That wind kicking up now, it's harder to see. So if you find a big target like that, it's uh, a little bit easier to stay in the zone on. Let's see if there's anything in there. Okay, this is the last try at this one. I've been here for too long. I don't know if there's even anything out there. It looks really good, but who knows? 